Organic chemistry accounts for about 25% of the questions on the biological science section of the MCAT. Of those organic chemistry questions, only a few of them will focus on reaction mechanisms. We're going to now talk about four important reaction mechanisms that you can expect to see on test day. These are SN1, SN2, E1, and E2. Now you've read about these mechanisms and you understand the different ways in which the substrates and the nucleophiles interact with each other and the various steps that are involved in producing the product from the reactants. What you are now in need of is a quick and easy way to remember the differences between these reaction mechanisms. If you ask yourself a series of four simple yes-no questions, you will be able to answer every question related to SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 on test day. The first question to ask is, will my substrate form a stable carbocation? If the answer to that question is no, then you must consider SN2 and E2 reaction mechanisms. If the answer is yes, then you should consider SN1 and E1. The second question to ask is, do I have a good nucleophile? And by good, we mean strong and reactive. If the answer is yes, then you should consider SN2 and E2. If the answer is no, then you should consider SN1 and E1. The third question to ask is, is my substrate sterically hindered? Now remember, steric hindrance increases with the level of substitution on the substrate. If the answer is no, then you must consider SN2 and E2 reaction mechanisms, but if the answer is yes, then consider SN1 and E1. Finally, ask the question, is my nucleophile also a strong bulky base? If the answer is no, then the mechanism to choose is SN2. If the answer is yes, then the mechanism that you should choose is E2. These four simple yes-no questions will guide you effectively in evaluating the various mechanisms that are tested on the MCAT. These four mechanisms constitute a significant portion of the MCAT's focus on organic chemistry reaction mechanisms.